to change it. And so then you sat down. And then Lee comes in. And so I got up and she goes, she comes over and she goes, sorry, I was late. You had to do that. I said, no, 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 you weren't here for the first part. And I'm like, it's hilarious because Joanne already changed it. <laughs> I said, I, 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 I said it was perfect. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Now she can catch a missile coming in. There you go. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We welcome you to worship on this cool Sunday morning. Uh, hopefully, we all survive this mini heat wave uh, we're going to experience this week. Find week to go. Find time to go to Arkansas. You know. Several announcements to share with you. I want to remind members of council of their meeting this coming. Thursday night at 7 p.m. If for any reason you cannot attend the meeting, please let uh, Council President John Stewart know. Also want to uh, remind you there's several opportunities for you to uh, vote right this morning. One, you'll find the sign, sign up sheet, if I want to call it that, it's on the bulletin board that simply has the words yeses and noes scattered all around it. I was trying to figure out an easy way for people to deal with their feelings in this still sensitive time of whether it's time we want to gather again for faith, food, and song occasionally. So. It's filled with yeses and noes, so you don't have to write your name. You just cross out a yes or cross out a no. And we'll have that up there for a few weeks. Only one yes or one no per person once, okay? <laughs> so if you're here this week and you cross yes because you want to do faith, food, and song, you don't get to cross off ever again, okay? You are done. I do have a video camera set up, so... <laughs> Uh, oh no. <laughs> so that is there for you. You'll also find on our table where the offering plate is um, a bowl and a listing of just sheets to fill out with prayer concerns. One of the things we've talked about in worship is keeping the prayer concern list as up to date as we could because as we looked at it we kind of got the feeling that the only way to get off the prayer list was to die. And we needed to do something to make it more current and effective for us. So we're going to once a month just wipe the prayer list that's in the bulletin clean and then start over with the list that people the names on the slips that people will fill out, we'll add them along with the prayer concerns that are shared within worship. And not only listing just concerns, but also then beginning to list also in the bulletin joints. And then having that full roundedness. And finally, there is on the, the table back where the current is, uh, a way that you can help with our new bit of technology we have out front in the LED sign. I'd like you to make comments, uh, share comments. If you come across the saying, that would be a really neat thing to put on the sign. Or information. We're trying to also use it as a way to publicize special events within the Christian year and special events that happen in our community. So if there are events and things like that that you think, well, that might be a good thing to put on the LED sign, give it. Um, write it down, put it in the bowl, that this will be an ongoing thing. And this is, you know, new technology, new art, 
and you're trying to learn, everyone's trying to learn how you do it to be most effective. So is at times you're, you're driving by and notice something where a message is really effective in grabbing your attention, being able to see it, let us know that. Write it down. Do not tell me. Okay, write it down. And also, if a message is there but can't be seen as easily as maybe it could, let us know that so we can learn the how, how best to adjust and use this bit of technology for the betterment of the congregation and the community. So there's work for all of us to do then. Okay, are there any other announcements we need to share? Remind you that next week is not only Fish uh, Collection Sunday for us, but it is also Father's Day and we have a really special uh, treat for the, for the men, so all the men be sure to be here. And if we have some leftover, uh, ladies, you'll get one too, okay? So. Let us then, with the sound of the prelude, let us worship God.
will stand for the call of worship. Come, all who need help. Our help comes from God, the one who made heaven and earth. Come, all who desire blessing. Our blessing comes from God, the God of Abraham, the God of the ages. Come, all who long for salvation. Our salvation comes from Jesus Christ, the one sent by God to save the world. this morning is Psalm 
121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. Amen. On this Trinity Sunday, we celebrate all the ways that God has made himself available to us. And God has also, through our times of prayer, made himself available to us to avail to others in their need and in times to share their joys with them. As we gather together on this day, are there words of joy, words of concern we wish to lift up and to share with one another? Kim. I have joy, my God will be good, Patty Davis. <laughs> well, well. Yeah. Any date set yet? Uh, probably not, no. Probably not till next fall. I'm hoping, I'm hoping for a bye week now. Hoping for, well, insist on a bye week. <laughs> but we share to celebrate that joy with you of an impending marriage and son in law. Tom. It's a joy to see the flag display. I believe that's this coming Tuesday, and I would suggest that we keep this display at least through Independence Day. I think that is the plan. And things. So you're thinking right along with us, Tom. Um, thank you. So if you have a flag, um, display it, especially this coming Tuesday. Then let us center ourselves in these moments, reflect upon how God has worked within our lives, how we have experienced the presence of of God's grace and goodness and lift that up to others as we join together first in our prayer of confession. God of salvation, you shower our lives and our world with love, yet we too often turn away from your blessing. It is just so easy to complain. There are, there are little, little annoyances each day, day but they, they pile up into a mountainous burden that becomes a curse on our lives. Free us from our unwise choices, O God. When, when we are distracted and confused, we redirect our attention to the abundant opportunities to experience your love. During this Lenten journey, Focus our hearts on you, that we may choose the blessing of salvation offered us each day, through Jesus Christ, in whom we pray. Amen. Receive these words of assurance. God did not send Jesus into the world to condemn it, but that the world might be saved through him. Through the saving love of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven and blessed. Amen. Let us each be at prayer.
O gracious God, who has made your presence known through creation, through your Son, Jesus, and through the Spirit that moves within us, through us, around us, out into the world, we gather on this day to thank you for the fullness of your love that accompanies us each and every moment that we live. You are with us with each inhale and exhale, with each smile and each tear. You accompany us on this, the journey of life. So lead us, gracious Lord. Help us on this journey. There are so many high hills to climb and so many deep valleys to climb out of. Help us be better at accepting one another, of not looking first for differences or focusing on differences, but first looking for and focusing on the commonality that exists between us, that no matter our color of skin, no matter the accent of our speech, we are one, for we are all your children. Help us, gracious Lord, curb a rising bent to violence. When weapons that are meant to protect are used as weapons to assail innocent people as they walk through life, as they gather, they simply shop for groceries, and as they assemble before their teachers in classes. Help us, gracious Lord, not turn the whole world into a fortress armed against itself, but to open ourselves up to the change of your love, to radically transform us who we are, how we see one another, how we'll reach out to help each other so that we can live and experience the fullness of life in all of its measures and glory. Be with us, gracious Lord. Inspire us on our journey to be one people under God. For this we ask in the name who came to make us one, who leads us as we pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
in these moments we pause we pause to remember the blessings of God that have fallen upon us in so many different ways our offering reflects only a part of those blessings may our joy resound loudly always proclaiming the breath of the goodness of the blessings of God Amen <laughs>
Well, to all of you who have been lovingly hounding me as to when my band, guitar band class, is going to do a concert at a bar. <laughs> and I stress, at a bar. I think it's more because we play at bars uh, that people come. Uh, you can tentatively mark your calendars for either Tuesday the 12th or the 19th at Peach's Open Mic in Yellow Spring. Okay? So I have told you. Be prepared. Scripture reading for this morning. I do not know yet. Okay. I've told him, I've told you the place. You can find the time. <laughs> I do not know the time. It's open mic, they assign us. So I think it starts at seven. I'm not sure. I haven't played Peaches before. Scripture reading comes from Genesis, the 12th chapter, verses 1 through 3. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and curse you. And the one who curses you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. These are of the words of God for the children of God this day. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our text today has three parts to it. Right now, I just want to focus on the first two. Those are, first God says to Abram, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you. I will direct you. I will guide you. I'll guide you with my personal presence. And I'll bless you with my direct power. You'll become a great nation, though you now stand childless. It's important to note, to understand, that what God says to Abram in this text, God also says to us. But it doesn't end just there. God says, not only will I bless you, Abram, and will I bless us, but I want to make you to be a blessing. I want to make you to be a blessing. I want to make it so that all the families, all the families that you come in contact with will also, can also be blessed by you. That's the challenging invitation for you and me today. It's for us to say to the God who enters into covenant with us today, here we are, God, here we are. Send us into our world. Send us into your world. Send us to bring your blessings and presence to the world. Now there is a question here, isn't, it? isn't there? And it's a critical question. The question is simply, how do we do this? How do we do this? How do we actually bring blessing to other people? Does it mean we go around saying to each one we see, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you? We'd probably like it if it was just that easy, but it's not that. How do we bring, how do we bestow blessing upon people? How do we bring blessing to our parents? To our spouse, to our children, our grandchildren. 
How do we bring blessing to our colleagues, to our neighbors, to those who suffer, to those who don't have access to the resources that we take for granted? How do we bring blessing to those who are dying? It's truly a critical question, isn't it? So I want to share some words with you today. That first of all, first of all, we bless people when we see them, when we recognize they're present, they exist. The very first miracle in the book of Acts happened as Peter and John were walking to the temple and they saw a lame man lying outside the temple. Here's how the story goes. One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going to the temple court. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him as John did. Then Peter said, Look at us. Look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, Gold or silver we do not have, but what we do have we give to you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, Peter helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet, and he began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking, jumping, and praising God. When all the people saw him praising God, they recognized him as the same man who sits outside the temple gate begging and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. It's when we really see each other that miracles can happen in our lives. The other morning, Sue and I were on our morning walk, and I tend to be rather... Uh, I tend to walk almost like a horse, racehorse with blinders. You know, a horse wears blinders so it only is seen straight ahead, doesn't get distracted by the outside uh, world. And unfortunately, that's still a habit I'm working to break to see the world around me. And Sue noticed I was missing something that Duane was seated across the street, leaning up against a utility pole, waiting for the cat's bus to come and pick him up. Duane's been here in worship with us. He's usually by my office at least once a week with his guitar and will fool around for a little bit. And, and he amazes me because he plays a right string guitar left-handed with no changes made. I, I don't understand. I look at the contortion of his fingers and I'm just amazed. But I had missed seeing him there. So I turned and waved to him and said hi, and he turned and waved and said hi back, and we just went on our way. Dwayne has never asked me for money, for food. He's never done that. He's asked more just by his presence to be recognized. So much so on that Tuesday when I have finished mailing things at the post office and I'm sitting at the intersection of 
of Hebel and North Central with my driver's side window down, all of a sudden a hand comes in my window. You know, it could kind of unnerved me for a moment, but I looked and it was Dwayne. He's on his bicycle and he'd stopped and he goes, I just thought I would stop and say thanks for saying hi. It got my day off well. Recognizing people, recognizing people changes it. You can find it in children all the time if you just look. They want to be recognized. We were at our grandchildren's home a little bit over a week ago, and I'm downstairs with, I think, all three of them this time, and I keep hearing a noise, but it's not coming from JD or Robin or me because we're really involved in Minecraft, but there's a noise that keeps coming, and I stop to listen, and I'm hearing this little tiny voice going, Oh, grandpa. And I finally look over, look around. There's nobody in the room other than the three of us. So I gaze to the only place it, I thought it could be coming. I gaze to the stairwell that's cut off from us. And then all of a sudden, there appears this blonde little head starting to peek around the corner. And it says, I see you, and giggles and disappears. It comes out again. Do you see me? And I said, yes, Alex, Grandpa sees you. And he just giggles with delight. He wanted to be seen. Wanted to be seen. Deep, I don't know if you agree with me, or not, but I believe deep down in the human heart, we all want to be seen. We all want to be seen. We want to be seen as human beings, as individuals and people of worth. But sometimes we are just unseen by people, unintentionally at times, but unseen nevertheless. Here's a real case that happened to me in the last two weeks. I'm sitting in my doctor's office. There are like two of us in the waiting room. I've been there a little while. After a while, the door opens where the nurse comes out and calls people in. And this nurse appeared, looked right at me and spoke these words. Are you the 2.30 appointment? And I said, no, I'm Jean. <laughs> and she smiles and she says, oh, I need to break that habit to be recognized as a person, to be seen. I wonder today if each of us, what would happen if each of us asked God for the grace to be able to really see each other to see each other, to see the world and people around us as image bearers of the divine, of God. To see each other with a sense of awe and reverence. And to especially see those who often feel invisible to us. We bless, second. We bless those around us when we affirm them. When we affirm them. Had you noticed in your time with the Bible that Jesus, the very Son of God, also needed to be affirmed? Do you remember that moment when he goes down to the river and John the Baptist baptizes him? And then the Spirit comes upon Jesus and Jesus hears the voice of God saying to him, You are my son. You are my beloved. I delight in you. It's a profound moment of being seen and being affirmed by Jesus. 
And it's from this moment of being affirmed that he then goes out and begins to minister. We have a deep need to be affirmed. Some of us carry very deep emotional wounds because when we were young, there wasn't someone in our lives who affirmed us. Or even worse, there was someone close to us in our lives whose actions, whose verbal toward us destroyed and not affirmed our self-image. They never heard the words, I'm really proud of you, daughter. I'm really proud of you, son. Maybe they heard just the opposite. You're a disappointment to me. You haven't done, fulfilled my dreams for you. All of us need to hear that as we strive to move and move to this, the rhythm of this dance of life, we need to hear the words of affirmation because they help us keep time, stay in rhythm, stay in step. I want to suggest that probably our deepest ministry we can bring to those around us is a ministry of affirmation. Grandparents affirming grandchildren, letting them know that they really, really matter. Parents affirming their children, no matter what their age, that their life is precious, precious to you, and that you are proud of them. Those who coach teams, need to affirm all of their players and not just those who are the stars. And I'm not talking about empty flattery. I'm talking about genuine, genuine affirmation that we can extend to those around us. We bless others when we see them. We bless others when we affirm them. Now, the last thing I want to say this morning, we become agents of blessing when we're willing to give our lives away so that others may be resourced for their lives. We give up our time, we give up our energy. We affirm others when we give away our own time, energy, and resources so that other people can flourish. I recently came across a picture on Facebook, and it really was too personal even the copy to show you. Though it's a really fantastic picture, and I guess in some ways I want to keep it for myself. Uh, but it's a picture of a grandmother and her adult grandson who has to be, gosh, At least his mid 30s now. When I was his pastor, I had the most difficult time in my ministry when I had to do his parents' <coughs> funeral service. His parents. They were killed in a car accident. He was taken in by his grandparents. Not wealthy people at all. A few years after the grandparents took him in, his grandfather that he loved dearly died. So it was just him and his grandma. She wasn't an educated woman. She worked at the local grocery store. And when I left there as pastor, she was working at least two and a half jobs to help him get through college without any debt. 
he was working, she was working. This picture that I saw was taken on the day he graduated with his PhD in biochemistry. He had a wonderful smile on his face, but the biggest smile in that picture wasn't him. It was grandma's. It was grandma's. She had given all of her time and energy in the hopefulness that this boy could flourish. And here was the culmination. And at the, you know, the words you can put in, in Facebook about a picture, he wrote, thanking his grandma and noted, noting the job he had been offered, saying, and now I can pay her back. She'll never work again. We flourish. We give ourselves so people can flourish. I could see in that photograph what really happens when we give our lives away to bless others. We come alive. We come alive. So we have to see people. We have to bless people. And we have to also admit right now that sometimes in life we're just not very good at doing that. We kind of move away from people, don't we? Stranger, the beggar. We move away from people. We move away from people we even shouldn't think we would move away from, but we do. I want you to watch this 30 second video. That's one of the public service announcements that's been released by the church. It says we see you. We don't reject you. Some people in life feel they've just been catapulted away. They can even come here and feel they've been catapulted away. The baby <laughs> cries. I talked with Kathy this week and I forget what, oh, we were talking about the drumsticks and symbols weren't we? And we got on to this other subject for some reason that it was, was it near the first times you and John were, were here? So if we take that all the way back, they carried Sarah in. You know, Sarah, who a lot of us will witness with them getting married in another month. They were carrying Sarah in with her, and Kara was that, Sarah was that baby in that church of that mom. And you saw how welcoming that church was. They pushed the eject button. But on that day, though nervous, I imagine, as a new mom, Kathy gave her baby over to a lady who came up to offer some assistance and take it to the back so they could worship. Most of you here remember Phyllis Mittman. That's what she did. She saw something. She was a blessing to you in that moment in time. And because of that moment in time, not only did she help with Sarah, but John and Stu, John and Kathy have kept coming back here for 25 years. When we open our eyes, when we make this covenant with God to be a blessing, John Wesley understood that it was really important for people to be in covenant with God and to reaffirm that so much so that he believed his church that was founded, the Methodist church, should reaffirm their covenant with God annually. 
So he created a service to do that. The service is often used by not only Methodists, United Methodists, but other denominations as a watch night service on New Year's Eve or as the first service in the first Sunday of the new year. The service focuses on us renewing our covenant with God to be a blessing to people. And in that, Wesley wrote a very powerful prayer to conclude that service. And I would like us, as concluding worship this morning in this message, to read that covenant prayer together, because it sets us on the course of what we're to be and to do. So if we could share in that together. I am, I am no, no longer, longer my own, own but, but yours. yours. Put, Put me, me to, to what you will. You will. Place, Place me with, with whom you will. You will. Put me, put me to doing, doing put, put me, me to, to suffering. suffering. Put Let me to me work for you or set aside, aside for you. Praise for you or criticize for you. Let, Let me be full. Let, Let me be empty. empty. Let, Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and fully and surrender all things to your glory and service. And now, now a wonderful, wonderful and holy God, God creator, creator redeemer, redeemer, and sustainer, you are mine and I am yours. So be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it also be made in heaven. Amen. Thanks be to God. Blessing to the world. Amen.